Hello, and welcome to another episode of Field Ready. I'm here with product manager Tim Royer to discuss the all new Archer 4 Rugged Handheld, the next step in mobile data collection from Juniper Systems. Hi, Tim, thank you for being here. I'm excited to talk about the Archer 4. Hello, Jillian, so am I. I'm excited for this product. Uh, so what would you say is the biggest advancement from the Archer 3? I would say that the greatest advancement with the Archer 4 is that we have a, an octa-core Qualcomm processor. It's an enterprise class processor. And why that's so important is it means that it has long life support. So um, it's going to continue to work um, beyond its release. It'll continue to have support for different security patches and software updates as those become available for users. The other thing that's really great about this processor, it's very power efficient. And so it will help to have long battery life for a user out in the field. Um, someone that is needing a device that works for their whole shift for all day, it'll perform that well for them. And then the other nice thing is with the upgrade with the processor, uh, we also have increased the amount of memory and storage. So it has eight gigabytes of, of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage, and then an SD card slot that can accommodate up to another 512 gigabytes of storage that way. And so all in all, you have a faster processor, you have a lot more memory capacity uh, just for a device that's refreshed to meet today's data collection needs. That's great. I know functionality and is important and longevity is important out in the field. So um, how else has the Archer design changed? Yeah, so the other things that have happened with the Archer is now it's a lot slimmer, it's lighter, it has a larger screen than the Archer 3. Um, and all of those things are important because we recognize that there are still people who want a rugged device that's small enough to slip in their pocket. Maybe they're climbing around on some uneven terrain or something like that, or they wanted a device that they can operate with just one hand. They still have that ability. The nice thing about the larger display also it allows them to see more of their data, or maybe they're doing a mapping application so they can see more of the screen at a given time. That's great. So what operating system run on the Archer 4? So the Archer 4 will launch, it will release with Android 14. And because of the processor's ability to receive updates, it'll upgrade through and has support through Android 18, which means it'll be supported through 2030, which is fantastic for people who are looking for a device that they can purchase now and have confidence that it will continue to work for them into the future. The other nice thing is the operating system, um, it's Android. And a lot of people are very familiar with Android now because it's what they carry in their pocket on their phone. And so it's familiar to them as they're navigating through the operating system or as they're interacting with their apps, it's very familiar to them. So how do users get applications onto their, their Archer 4? So a couple ways. Um, one that I think most people are familiar with is that they can just go to the Google Play Store and look for whatever app that they wanted. They could download it there. Um, alternatively, if somebody had um, apps that they were purchasing directly from a supplier, maybe it was on their website, they could go to that website and download the app onto the Archer 4. Uh, aside from doing it those two ways, the other thing that could work is somebody could plug in the USB-C cable into their PC and do side loading of apps from their PC to the Archer 4. And which wireless communications uh, does the Archer 4 support? Yeah, so the Archer 4 supports Wi-Fi, cellular, and Bluetooth communications. On the Wi-Fi, uh, it's sixth generation Wi-Fi and backwards compatible to the earlier, earlier generations. On the cellular, uh, something that's really neat on the Archer 4 is earlier versions of the device, you had to pay extra. It was a different configuration to get cellular communication. And usually that was just for data communication. Now on the Archer 4, every unit comes standard with data and voice, and it's 5G with fallback to 4G. So if you're in an area where 5G isn't yet completely built out, you'll still have cellular connectivity. The Bluetooth, um, the module that we picked, something I'm excited about is when we've done our testing, just some preliminary testing, it maintains connections up to 650 feet away. Um, so 200 meters. And of course that depends on which devices are in that communication connection, but that, we feel that that's pretty impressive. And then the nice thing also, uh, going back to the cellular, is it is a dual SIM device. That means that somebody could have two SIM cards in. Uh, carriers, um, generally you would have to switch that out physically, but by having two of them in there at the same time, if a person transitioned from an area maybe where AT&T was stronger to an area where Verizon was stronger, if they had both of those SIM cards in, they're not gonna lose connection during that transition. So mapping's pretty important for those out in the field. What sort of GNSS accuracy should users expect with the Archer 4? So the Archer 4 has a chipset GNSS receiver, it's a part of the processor chipset, that has accuracies of about two to five meters. 
Um, if they needed something more accurate than that, then we do have an expansion pod that they could purchase that would get them submeter accuracies. What we have found is most people when they are out just doing general location, maybe they're um, you know, just trying to navigate, get into the neighborhood of a point or something like that, or, or take a point in, in a general neighborhood, then the chipset GNSS receiver would probably be adequate. But for someone who is maybe more closely looking for accuracies of specific assets, maybe they're mapping, you know, sprinkler heads or manhole covers or boundary lines or things like that. It's not survey grade, but it would allow them to get that submeter accuracy down to a couple of centimeters um, in those situations. Okay. Um, so Juniper products are always uh, ready to customize. What sort of expansions are available on the Archer 4? Great question again. So on the Archer 4, on the back of it, we have an area that has uh, an expansion bay. And the two expansions that we were looking at launching with uh, right away, um, one of them I was just talking about was the GNSS expansion pod that does the RTK grade accuracy. So this would just click into place and be screwed on there, and that would give somebody that submeter accuracy. If they had RTK correction services, then they would get down to centimeter grade accuracies. So that's one of them. The other one uh, is a 1D, 2D barcode scanner that also would go in the same location on the device. And then if somebody were uh, using this to scan barcodes, maybe in a warehouse setting or asset tracking, they would have the ability to just scan uh, those barcodes right into the device. We do include uh, an app on here that we make in-house that they can use to port that scanned data right into whatever application they are using. That's great. And so could you explain the battery life and battery options that are available? Sure. So the Archer 4 has two battery options. Um, the one that's on this device right now is the standard battery. It's a 4,500 milliamp hour battery. And we expect that that would give somebody about eight to 10 hours of battery life. So perfect for someone who uh, maybe it's just a, a shift in a warehouse or um, just a normal day and they're out in the field collecting information. And then there's an optional 8,300 hour milliamp hour battery that um, lasts about 18 to 20 hours. So for someone who's maybe going to be out longer, maybe there are going to be a couple of days between the ability to charge the device, then they would be able to have that larger battery and still collect data. The other neat thing on the Archer 4 is every device comes with an internal 300 milliamp hour battery. So it's just a, a small coin size battery that allows them to remove one battery and maybe put in a new fully charged battery without powering down the device. They're able to do that hot swap battery change. So what are the accessories that are available with the Archer 4? The Archer 4 comes with several standard accessories in the box. There's a wall charger, there's cables for charging, there is a hand strap, there are um, international plug kits, so if someone's plugging their device in into a foreign country, they still have the ability to use those with the outlet chargers there as well. And then there is a screen protector that they can purchase. We also have an external battery charger. So if someone is in a use where they are switching the batteries out as the battery gets expired, they could take and put that battery in the wall charger, charge it up, and then continue to still be using the device and swap them back out again. And then kind of a sneak peek, a few things that we are looking at that we're really excited about. One of them is we are in the process of developing a one-handed tactile Bluetooth keyboard. Those who are familiar with our Allegro product line will recognize the form factor. It's very similar. And it's intended for people who want to be able to do a lot of rapid data entry, but still use just one hand so that you're not holding a device in one hand and still typing on the device. You can just use your one hand with this. And why that's really important is it allows you to still have a free hand. So if you're holding a tape measure or you're holding some other probe or something like that to continue to collect data, you can do that. Or if you just wanted another hand to steady yourself as you're walking through some rugged terrain. So you would have this and then the Archer 4 would just click into this bracket at the top of the device and still have all of the functionality and capability that the updated Archer has with a long life Bluetooth keyboard that would work seamlessly with the Archer 4 and, and successive generations of product as well. And then something else we are working on is called the Geode Grip. It's a cradle that will hold the Archer and a Geode GNSS receiver. So if someone already has a Geode receiver, and they didn't want to purchase um, the GNSS expansion pod for the Archer 4. They would still have the opportunity to hold all of those things in one hand, go out and collect data with higher accuracy uh, for the GPS measurements than what you would get just using the chipset on the, GN on the, the, chipset on the Archer 4. 
Field jobs are really rough on computing devices. Can you explain how the Archer 4 meets Juniper Rugged standards? Sure. One of the first things we talk about when we talk about Juniper Rugged is called IP68. That means it has ingress protection and the 6.8 refer to a classification system. That means that it's waterproof and dustproof. So a person could be out working in the rain, they could be um, in a dirty, dusty environment, and they're not going to have to worry about how that's affecting the device. Um, specifically with our products, you can drop them, submerge them in water for up to a half hour at depths of a meter without it affecting the device. Pull it back out and it will still work just fine. Some of the other ruggedness that we talk about with a Juniper device is uh, there's a, a standard, it's called Mill Standard 810. And this Archer 4 is going to be compliant with several parts of Mill Standard 810H. That means that it's protected against vibration, against shock, against drop, um, working in extreme temperatures. We talked already about the waterproof and the dustproof. But really the device is made to perform well in any kind of work condition that a person would encounter in a rugged environment. So here's a common question. Say on the very rare chance that something does happen to it and it breaks. Is the Archer 4 repairable? Yeah, we recognize that that's something that a lot of our customers value, is the ability to send a device in and have it repaired if something does happen to it. And so, you know, especially I think all of us have been in a situation where we accidentally drop our phone or a tablet and the screen shatters or maybe the port wears out. And so we have the ability to repair some of those common components. So we can do screen repairs, we can replace a port. If a main board were to go out, or if the internal battery wears out. We can repair all of those components if someone would rather do that than invest in a new device. So where can people learn more about the Archer 4 and make a purchase? They can contact us directly. They could go on our website to see more information about the Archer 4, or they could also reach out to any one of our dealers. That's amazing. It sounds like there's a lot to look forward to with the Archer 4. Thank you for joining me, Tim, and for sharing all of your expertise. We're excited to get this going and to share the Archer 4 with, for the next rock-solid field-ready device. Thank you, Jillian. It's great talking with you.